My name is uh, Gosse van der Meer. I'm a 23-year-old cyclocross rider, born and raised in the Netherlands, currently living in Germany. And I'm on my way up north to the English border with Scotland to race and ride the Dirty Reaver. I finished uh, my last year cyclocross season just in the top 50 of the UCI ranking and well let's see how that much will give me an advantage during this 200 km gravel ride up and down 3800 altitude meters. It will be really heavy, really long, but I'm really looking forward. In the morning of the event I woke up and I knew straight away this breakfast has to be huge when I need to do a 200 km ride. Also the days before we ate a lot like really a lot more than a lot more than I used to eat and then in the morning I eat a really big breakfast with oatmeal and some sandwiches the good thing I knew like it wouldn't be a start just like in a cycle cross race like straight from the gun full gas but now it was with a neutral start for a few kilometers first you standing there in line with 1200 riders at the beautiful Kielder castle just a little bit chatting having a having a chill time actually it was really chilly because it was really cold Then as soon as the race starts you just ride off for a few kilometers, then everyone is a little bit nervous looking around, I didn't know any of the riders, maybe some of them knew me, maybe some of them didn't know me, but I didn't know anyone and so I was like not knowing who were the fast guys. All of a sudden there's, there's a rider uh, riding on the right side of me and he just says to me, you should definitely look look to your left now. And I just looked up and you saw the sun coming up in between the trees and that was like really cool. That was like one of the coolest things I ever saw in a, in a bike race. You see the morning sun coming up in between the trees. And then rode on for a few kilometers and then I saw, saw a big glance of haze in the distance and then I knew like this ride is about to start now. Since I'm normally focused on racing full gas for one hour, also my training scheduled are based on getting, getting to be the best at racing full gas for one hour. So this ride 200 kilometers, I calculated around seven hours for it, would be a really long ride. Also it was straight away the longest ride I did this entire year. There was one certain trail that really came up during during the ride and that was actually in the downhills you're riding with with skinny tires on a loose surface and you could watch really far in front of you so you could just 
let go of the brakes and just keep on rolling down and I think my maximum speed was over 70 km an hour just on the gravel. After a while I, I took it really easy in the downhills because there was one thing in my mind all the time, watch out for flat tires. You lose maybe two minutes changing a tire, even if it's even is it more. There were 1200 riders and they were all there because they just really liked riding a bike. And actually the day before I heard like the best way to to approach such an event is when it's getting heavy or when you're suffering, remember that you really like riding a bike. And you really felt that, that fight there, like everyone just really likes riding a bike. You really feel that the people there are doing the ride, enjoying the, the, the region, the environment, the castle and everything around it. And that, that made me also realize like I'm also here to just enjoy this experience and the ride and the course and the gravel and uh, everything around it, uh, the scenery and that's just like everyone's just having a good time. That's that's really cool. So I kept on riding again. I caught up with the, the rider on the mountain bike in front and we were back with the two of us in front. Then I stayed with him for a long time and on a mountain bike on this surface you're you're having an advantage especially on the downhills. So I, I still kept on riding the downhills really smooth, but I kept on keeping the pace up really high. After 170 kilometers or something, one of the biggest fears of the day happened to me. I hit one unlucky rock at the downhill and straight away flat tire. I was lucky to, to break really fast on this rocky surface downhill to not hit my rim. That was a really a good act of sportsmanship from from the rider on the mountain bike. He had been in my wheel the entire day and he helped me with my flat tire that was just very unlucky. He could also keep on riding and go all out but he decided to wait for me because he knew uh, I was his biggest help that day and that was for me a true act of sportsmanship so you don't see at any other races but in this gravel community. Sometimes you come in a race, you come in a point you know like I'm going to win this race if I don't break my bike and then it's really important to keep like good handling of your bike, keep it smooth, keep your head in the game, don't do any mistakes, don't look around you anymore, just look at the trails, avoid the stones, don't do any stupid things anymore and, and then I'll know like it's three kilometers left to the castle and then I kept on riding really smooth and I was the first one on the, on the castle back. Then it was the be most beautiful castle I've ever seen. Just after almost seven hours on the bike, you know, like, okay, now I'm finally back at the castle. I can lay down, get the legs up and don't need to pedal anymore today. And that was an awesome feeling and it was just, just a really cool day out on the bike. and was happy that I did it. Then I made it back to the castle where there was a nice finisher beer waiting for me. Every half an hour, that's why. Yeah, that's so. I have to eat like six bars, and I, I really need to get sponsored by this one factory because I take them all over the world. It's called stacking the booster. So, <laughs> stacking the booster means you put it in your pocket. <laughs> and how are you gonna exactly carry all this food? Every half an hour, I need to eat one of those bars. And if we do like around seven hours of riding, 
I need to eat at least like uh, these six bars in the first three hours. Uh, this cliff bar contains enough to get me through one hour. These two get me through another hour. So here we are already five hours on the go. I will snack those uh, multi fruit bars along the way all the time. Just put them under my pants. Pro tip, put them under your bit uh, pants. I'll take uh, two gels, but I'll put also some stuff at the feed station. Feeding station two, you can drop a bag, so I'll put some stuff there. The fresh, I, uh, I got some stuff for you as well. Oh, yeah, and if I get hungry, uh, yeah. And these ones are really good at this taste them. Oh yeah, no shit, I'll bring my bounties. Yeah, I always bring bounties on the, on the way. So I got uh, this pure bounty. Also another pro tip, always buy the red ones with the pure chocolate because they don't, uh, they melt not as fast as the blue one with the milk chocolate. Dope. For example, this bounty has then 16 grams of uh, for carbohydrates and this Sportness Natural Energy Bar, uh, 30 grams. So and it's much easier to eat a bounty than this one. So just eat bounties. But I thought I brought two bounties. So there's another bounty somewhere around on each one. Holy fuck. But this, uh, this gel is raspberry ripple flavor and I have also an apple crumble gel somewhere. I have a forest fruit, really good one. Banana, banana, this is ba banana waffle or something, banana coffee. And I got the uh, first choice cola. The way I live my life is not made for working. I need to ride my bike every day, otherwise I'll just get... I need to make a career switch to become like a sumo wrestler. <laughs> Probably if I'll, if I'll keep eating the same amount. But it will be fine. We'll be fine.